that we continue to have brothers and sisters who live a life unworthy of our family. Benedict is not simply philosophizing or theologizing, but as I've tried to show, suggests a holistic approach to strengthen our mutual effort toward integral human development. His worldview is both idealistic and in the best sense, drawing us towards transcendence. It's the true way of our human lives, and it's realistic, being carried out even now. As I say, with some of the examples I've given, if only in small ways, as the Gospel says, small ways like the mustard seed or the pinch of yeast. But getting the pinch of yeast to grow, anybody who's ever made bread, it's hard work. And indeed, integral human development in our day, but in its own words, is an altogether new and creative challenge, one that is vast and complex. And so to the university, Benedict's response to that challenge is what leads us to look at ourselves as a university, and I see three challenges. First, Benedict calls for a broadening the scope of reason, making it capable of knowing and directing these powerful new forces, requiring, among other things, a deeper reflection on the economy, on the meaning of economy, society, and its goals. That's our first challenge as a university, to get involved, to continue to be involved in understanding those complexities, to analyze what Benedict sees both as the inconvenient truth of the failures of development, as well as the positive and creative options that are possible. I'm reminded of my previous work before I came here in Washington, D.C., and the many times that with Catholic and other groups with whom we worked uh, in advocacy issues looking for policy changes and support. The number of times that they would ask for the support and the help of Jesuit universities in developing that analysis. You know, they would say, you guys have got these 28 universities, can you, can you help us with analysis and ideas and suggestions that can guide and strengthen our policy work? I think our, our network is, is an opportunity that we don't always take advantage of. So that's the first very basic challenge. The second is that Benedict, it seems to me, also challenges us on the how. How we go about knowing and analyzing as a university. About the processes that we engage in, in which we guide our truths, if you will. He finds the illusion of individualism and self-sufficiency present in academia as well. Academia, which is a world he knows well. And he specifically and directly warns us about that danger. And here I will give you some quotes. He says that the key to development is a mind capable of thinking and grasping the fully human meaning of human activities within the context of the holistic meaning of, in, of the individual's being. But it calls not just for knowledge but for wisdom. And he reminds us that Paul the sixth, 40 years ago, blamed underdeveloped, among other things, on, for those of us in the university, you'll love this, blamed underdeveloped on a lack of clear thinking. A lack of clear thinking. Capable of formulating a guiding synthesis for which a clear vision of the economic, social, cultural, and spiritual aspects of life are required. And perhaps touching, we beat on this one more time, perhaps touching even closer to university reality, this is also a fact that it is for the students, Benedict continues, and I quote, the excessive segmentation of knowledge, the rejection of metaphysics by human sciences, the difficulties encountered by dialogue between science and theology, are damaging not only to the development of knowledge, which is our little world, but also to the development of people. Because these things make it harder to see the integral good for the human person in its various dimensions. Now, obviously enough here at USF, we share that concern. There's all kinds of efforts that we've made to learn together, work together, learning to listen to each other across disciplines. Uh, we'll have a book signing on Thursday of uh, an interdisciplinary uh, work in uh, theology and uh, sociology in a number of areas. 
We've all struggled with the tension between mastering our own disciplines on the one hand and working in an interdisciplinary manner, interdisciplinary manner, especially in our research, which depends on methodology specific to our discipline. About a month ago, 10 of us from USF, one of my colleagues is here, uh, were addressing just this issue with colleagues from other Jesuit universities at this year's Western Conversations meeting. The need to develop better structures for working together came out of each one of our groups. And there was a creative reminder and recommendation from one of the speakers. She pointed out that this university shares in an intellectual tradition, in our case, the Catholic and Jesuit intellectual tradition, and that that tradition can help guide us towards a common focus, a common focus that we see. And I'd like to think that this conversation today is part of that process, that part of strengthening that tradition, seeing ways that we can be working together more fruitfully. Our own Catholic intellectual tradition, broadly understood, as finding God in all things, St. Ignatius Loyola would say, provides that context for the work of our university. In this way, the challenge of love and truth is for us to be really more of who we are, to be more a university. Because a university is a community that seeks to integrate all that can be known into the mission, into the mission of human development. Obviously, now this challenge is not only about how we treat each other in the university, it's as complicated as that may be. The other side of this holistic development and knowledge that guides it is that it includes all peoples. And so, here at USF, we need to continue to reach out beyond ourselves, to make this university consciously and actively engaged in the social whole of which we are a part in our neighborhood, in the city whose name we bear, as part of the set of the family of Jesuit and Ignatian ministries that share this charism, and this tradition, as part of a nation which has such power and responsibility, and our world on Mother Earth and the human race on which we depend so deeply, and to whom we owe so much respect. So that's the second challenge, the how, to make sure that we, we, we are doing this work of study <coughs> and analysis. That, that, doesn't, uh, in it, that doesn't make it itself uh, ineffective. But finally, a third challenge. While we demand of ourselves an integral and holistic knowledge, we know that we always see the world through a particular perspective, through a particular lens, and we have a choice about that perspective. And the truth that drives that choice for us needs to be the same truth that drives Benedict. That too many people still cannot live truly human lives, that the scandal of glaring inequality still faces us, that hunger still reaches enormous numbers of victims, and that most importantly, as we've seen, many of these situations of hunger development are not due to chance, but are attributable to human responsibility. Paul VI, in, uh, on the progress of peoples, and then Benedict quotes it, Paul VI says that the key task of educators is to teach their students to love. The key task of educators is to teach our students to love, and particularly to love those who are forced to live in this world. And so our choice must be to see the world from the perspective of the impoverished and the marginalized. We seek to see the world through their eyes and to learn from them the realities that we cannot see even from low mountain. And to be guided by that knowledge, not only to solve problems in that technical sense that that wants us, but for ourselves. So that we better face our own impoverishment and vulnerability. That truth about ourselves that only love can make whole. Thanks very much.